Hi, I'm Peggy Farron, and you're watching the Understand Photography Show, where we talk about travel, nature, and fine art photography. We're going to talk to photographer Timothy Bath today about preparing for art shows. The Understand Photography Show first is a podcast, so if you're wondering why we don't have any visuals, that's why, because we have a, a, a quite a large audience on our podcast, not quite as big on our YouTube and Facebook, but if you would like to change that, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. <laughs> Be sure to sign up for one of our freebies on our website, which is understandphotography.com. By signing up for one of our freebies, you'll be on our mailing list, and we send out a newsletter just once a month. It's full of photo tips and what's happening within Understand Photography. What you'll get in return is your choice of a, of a freebie, is what we call it. We've got several on there, like which camera do I buy? Um, how do I get tack sharp images? 30 unique gifts for photographers. Anyway, there are a bunch of different choices. I think there are six different choices on different things you can download or watch a video. Um, we also have a couple of Facebook groups I want to tell you about. One is a general group, the Understand Photography Facebook group. That's for asking any kind of questions, share any kind of pictures you've got. You can ask for critiques or you can just show off a good shot. Or you can say, hey, I don't know what kind of lens to buy. Can you guys help me? Or I'm having this problem with my computer, or not computer, but camera. Whatever. That's a general group. We have a second Facebook group that's all about selling your photography as art. So if you want to become a fine art photography, if you want to make money selling your photography as an artist, not this isn't for portrait photographers or wedding photographers. It's about artists that's the group for you. So if you go on our Facebook group, it's facebook.com slash understand photography, you'll see where it says groups and you'll see those two groups listed there. So anyway, Timothy Bath is my guest today. Timothy, Tim is a nature photographer, landscape photographer whose work can be, I met him at the shows here in, in Southwest Florida. He's big into the art show circuit, so that's what we're gonna talk about today. So welcome, Tim. Well, welcome to you. Thank Glad you to be here. Coming all the way from Naples, Florida. Yes, <laughs> just down the street. <laughs> Do you live near here? Oh yeah. How yeah. close? Collier and Immokalee, that oh, area. That's, yeah. that's yeah. a half hour, right? It is, it's a, a long good time. half yeah. hour, yeah. at least a it's half It's a big hour. area. It sure is. Mm -hmm. Collier County is one of the biggest, I don't think it's the biggest county, is it? In Florida? It's it pretty might close. Be. Yeah. It's a pretty big county because mm -hmm. we've got half of the Everglades, which yeah. I love. Yeah. It's fun. Oh I like my getting God, out there. We're so lucky to be here. How long have you been here? I uh, moved here in 2009 and uh, started my business here in 2010. Uh, my wife, I've been a photographer since the early 70s, used to do black and white, had my own dark room and, and work for photographers. And, and it was fun. And uh, when we got down here, she said, you know, you're not going to sit on the couch all day and you ought to get out there and, and you love going out and taking bike rides and going these places. So why don't you start uh, maybe picking something up and start working with it and we'll see how it goes. And that's what I did. Ah. Yeah. I had not done shows before then. Oh, so all right. All yeah. So let's talk about the show. Well, so how did you, so is that when you started selling your photography? You were, you were into photography, but were you selling your photography before Not you at the time. I had, okay. I had, uh, I had, you know. You had a real burn job, Burn sheets, right? and yeah, I had a real, I was a teacher. I taught science and math for 35 years, and, uh, you know, then I worked for a college as a supervisor for student teachers, and, and then at that time, I was getting into the Canon market, and I started picking up lenses, and so, uh, I'd get paid for my spring semester and I'd go out and buy a lens and I'd get paid for my fall semester and go out and buy a lens and so one thing led to another and so that's where so I am today. So when you came here you were retired basically. Yes, I was. And that's when you said, I like photography, I'm going to do something with it. I want to have some fun and do something I really, really have a passion for so that's, that's how it started. That's yeah. awesome, yeah. that's awesome. So how did you decide to get into art shows? How did you decide that that was the right way to sell your art? I, I decided that, I found a friend at church that uh, was a photographer, Dennis Goodman, and, uh -huh. uh, and Dennis kind of took me under his wing and uh, we spent a lot of time shooting. He'd take me out and, uh, you know, kind of gave me some pointers on, on, on better technique. And uh, from there, uh, I remember him going, you know, you need to get into a show. You need to go do a show. You need to get, and I'm like, I don't know how to do that. And so he invited me to, I think it was the Art Crafters group. He said, come on over. 
uh, you know, I'm gonna be there Saturday, come on over and, you know, let's see what you think. And so I spent a little time with him and he was selling things and I would walk and, and photography being what I wanted to do, I'd stop at booths that had photographers. Okay. And I just uh, kind of talked to them. If they weren't busy, I, I knew better than to get in their face, but you know. And so, uh, yeah, well, how did you do this? How do I go about doing this? You know, uh, who do I talk to? And, uh, and then I, uh, I talked to some people from the Art Crafters group and uh, put together a portfolio of pictures that I could take down there and uh, did the jury and uh, you know, stopped in, dropped the pictures off, an hour later came back and woohoo, you made it. You do, you've got beautiful work. And so that's how it began. And, and that was to get into an art crafters show. Right, to get and into the art crafters the, yeah. is a local group of artisans here in yes. Southwest Florida. Been right? around for fifty years, yeah. Okay, yeah. so that was that was the first show. That was the beginning. Yeah. So you first you qualified to get into the show. Yeah. How did you decide what pieces to put in to be juried in? Well, that's especially kind as a new person. <laughs> Or how would, I shouldn't say just, yeah. I, I kind of want to know what your thought process was at the time, but I also want you to teach somebody new, because I'm right. a judge at the Naples Art Association for Arts right. in the Park, mm -hmm. and I, I just want to go and say, people, you're doing this wrong, or, or whatever, you know? Yeah. I want to yeah. teach them what they're doing, not that they're bad photographers. Mm -hmm. They're good photographers, but they're giving you like one bright happy picture, one dark gloomy picture, one on canvas, one on print, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how did you know what to put in and how to do that? Did you ask for advice from your friends? I, I kind of did, I, 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 and, I, and, I, and I realized that if you're gonna go big, then, and you're gonna go try to get into a show, that uh, you probably wanna have better work. So I looked at things that I did well and uh, uh, things that I was complimented on. Okay. So I had a couple of bird pictures that I used and I had a couple of landscape pictures. And I did them uh, at the time on canvas. And you had four pictures? I had, I think, I think it was a total of four. And so I did them on canvas. Uh, it, if I could do it again, I probably would have now, especially I would have had a metal print. Uh, it didn't even have to be a big metal print. Something that really has wow factor and people uh, it's it's so crystal clear and it's it's so in your face. It's you know I to me I love metal prints now and I've been doing a lot of those, but at the time that was what I was the best at and uh, and were they framed? They no they were unframed they were uh, canvas gallery wraps, wraps gallery wraps yeah so uh, it, at the because I didn't have a lot of money at the time and well, I how didn't much, know what that cost you for, to do four canvases how big uh, they were like 20 by 30 canvases so and it cost you a few hundred bucks yeah anyway, it did right? sure yeah like it was five, expensive six hundred bucks right and I had a guy that was a photographer or a, a, a printer and he helped me out with the price you know so I was able to get that that really helped you know this is expensive exactly so uh, you know but I got to know some people and and it's a matter of just talking to people and finding out who does what and then kind of getting to know them as friends. Well, and then, say, you know, say you're new in town, how would you get to know people like that? Um, I would go to an art show. And uh, now it's kind of the end of the season. Uh, we're uh, for winding us, up for winding up. We're but, in Florida. Right, it's exactly. It's the beginning of the season. Exactly. For the rest of the United States. It is. <laughs> and, and a lot of my friends down here. Uh, do shows all year round. So there, uh, there's a, a bunch of people up in the Chicago area. I was gonna say, they're heading up north. Right, and, and they can do shows. Up there, there's a show a weekend somewhere within 40 miles. And so there's you know, certain people that you, you have worked with and you, you, know, you find out who is in charge of those shows and you send them an email and say, how do I jury in? You know, find out what they need. And uh, most of the people that have been doing shows down here uh, if they have good work that they can put online, you know, people are going to uh, ask them to be in their shows, you well, know, booths and that sort of thing. I know. mean, one of the things, and anyone who's ever listened to my show knows that I preach this all the time, that you need to join your local art association. Absolutely, 100%. And do you belong to the Naples Art Association? I, I belong to the Naples Art Association and, and the Art Crafters. Yeah, Art Crafters is big here. Yeah. So yeah. we're lucky to have two right. nice, nice associations. Yeah. And the Naples Art Association is awesome. The, they go out of their way to help artists. They, they go sure out of do. their way to uh, make sure that you have, they have 
cold drinks for you during the day. That, you know, and I always carry two coolers, but uh, I don't have to worry so much there. Things well, like that. Well, you know that, what they you know? do for us when we judge? They give us wine. Well, <laughs> it's a different time of day. <laughs> but, they, but it's nice. Yeah, sure. You know what I mean? It's yeah. a nice organization. Yeah. But I mean, most of them that I know, like Lee County Alliance of the Arts is very similar. Mm -hmm. Benita has a really good, you know, they've got a co-op in Benita, a right. co-op uh, gallery. Yeah. They yeah. just... The art associations, that's their job, is to help artists succeed. And Absolutely. that's why it's got to be your first step. That's yeah. my opinion, right. which is right. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I agree. Well, the nice thing is when you start with a, 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 an area a, in, in your own area where you know where things are and what you're doing uh, as far as uh, concerning people and, and groups, it's a, a little bit easier to start out that way because you don't need a really big tent and you don't need all the fancy stuff that you would use at a major show, say a Richard Sullivan or a Howard Allen show, something like that, which I'm familiar with here in Florida. And um, it allows you to learn while you're selling things without having to worry too much about spending thousands and thousands of dollars on equipment and things for shows that you see in some of those booths, those are people who've been around a while. And they have collected these things. Uh, many of them never bought them new. They bought them used. And there's all kinds of uh, groups that you, you just Google it. Naples, Florida, Google areas where you could uh, find used equipment, used you know tents, used uh, panels, that sort of thing. I think that's really important. And then as you get better, you kind of know what you want, and you kind of can see what you need more of. And then you go to some place like Pro Panels, and you get what you want, get the new ones, get the lights, whatever you want to use, you know. Okay, so when you're starting out, what you're suggesting is, instead of investing in all that stuff new, mm -hmm. find used equipment, because you don't really know what you want. Right, and you may find out that you thought you were going to make a million dollars, and the first show you went to, you made 40 or you made nothing. And then you've got to say, what did I do differently? What am I seeing here that I didn't have in my booth? Why is it that no one likes my work? And you think your work is great. And it probably is, but it takes time. And it takes people that get to know you. And I think that's very important. I have a lot of customers that come back year after year. And you know, and you know what, I, I walk every morning with a girlfriend and uh, she thinks differently than I do. Mm -hmm. I'm like a very internet oriented person. Mm -hmm. I do all my grocery shopping on the internet. It gets <laughs> delivered to my door. You know, that's just kind of the way I live. Yeah. And she says things like, oh, I got to go to buy some sheets from Macy's. And I'm thinking, you're going to go to the store to buy sheets? I can't even imagine <laughs> doing that, you know? But anyway, she's, she always goes to the art fairs. Mm -hmm. She loves the art fairs. And she said, I have been looking for this artist. He, and, you know, I've gone to that art show, and he was there, and now he's not back this year. Mm. I said, well, didn't you get his card? She said, well, I just assumed he'd be back. Yeah, yeah. I was so surprised by that, because that just, that would never even occur to me. I would get the guy's information, go on his website immediately, you know? Mm -hmm. But she thinks that way. And it was a big eye-opener for me, because if she thinks that way, and she's not that old... Mm -hmm. I mean, she's not a young woman either, but it's not like she's an older, right? you know, sometimes people, well, old people, that's what they do, but she's not that old. She's in the business world, and, you know, mm -hmm. and she thinks that way. She thinks they're going to be at that show again if they were there once. Right. And uh, that's another, well, that was something else that I started uh, almost immediately when I got into uh, uh, photography shows, is I set up a website. and. And uh, so then, once I had the website, I set up my cards. So my cards have all my information, and uh, the website has all the shows that I'm going to have that year, and where they're going to be. And if there's changes, uh, it's put on the website. Or let's say I can switch pictures out on my, my front page. So I'm constantly looking at changing things so people will go, from the main page to browse and start looking at the other pictures that I have available. Yeah. And that's gotten to be fairly inexpensive and uh, it's a great way to uh, let people contact you 
And so oftentimes they'll see a picture on the website that they didn't see at the show. And I do a lot of after sale, after show sales. And those are people that want something for the kitchen or something for the living room that has to be 58 inches wide. You know, and now you can find their favorite picture and you can customize it to fit that space. They love that. That's mm -hmm. a big deal. So shows get you into that group and people start seeing you and then they believe that you can do what you do and they're happy to work with you. So All right, so let's go back to the beginning. So Sorry. okay, so <laughs> so your first show, yeah. your or mm -hmm. uh, your first show kind of an advice to other people for, mm -hmm. for for their first show. Okay. You're mm -hmm. suggesting okay, just walk around a couple of shows and meet right. some people because that's going to help you first of all it's going to help you see what other people are doing. Correct. And, how they're interacting with customers and things like that mm -hmm. and then also kind of seeing what kind of tents they have and that kind of stuff and then right. buying used to start right how much of an okay let's say that you know the investment for your photographs is going to be at least a couple thousand dollars right? oh yeah oh yeah so let's mm -hmm. put that money aside how much for the tent and the like the fee to get into most shows, like a local show, yeah. because some of the shows are very expensive. Mm -hmm. But a local show, like the Art in the Park, is not too much. It's like a hundred dollars, right? Yes, yeah, I think it's a hundred ten or hundred ten. Uh, yeah, yeah, and and Art Crafters is the same way. It's about the same price. Um, so and that's every yeah. time, or every show, right? Okay. And so I had to consider uh, how many shows are there a year. Uh, I, I liked. I decided that I was going to put money into buying and paying for all the shows. And the reason for that is then usually when you get a space, you get to keep that space. If you buy a show here and then say, I'm going to buy two shows from now, two months from now and buy and get another show, you don't know where you're going to be. And it's nice to have a place where people know where you're, where yeah. you're going to be. So I know that makes... That people wouldn't think of that, but uh, well, after I talked know. to Kathy when she said that she was looking for the artist at the show, I just thought that was so odd. But I guess <laughs> you know people do that. They yes, go back they do. to the show to look specifically for you, Tim mm -hmm. Bat. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. okay, so you bit the bullet and and paid. You have to pay all up front. I did. Yeah. So six shows. Yeah, and I did it bucks? for both. Yeah, and I did it for both uh, of the uh, groups the art crafters and, and the uh, Von Liebig. And, okay. and it, I, that money was gone, I knew that, but now I can make money and I don't, you know, I don't, it's kind of like it's done, all right? As far as tents concerns, um, I, I still have a pop-up tent that I've used. If I do a show, a big show, I rent a tent because uh, the dome tents are better uh -huh. in weather and they don't leak. And uh, some, and if you set up for two days and you have a pop-up tent, it's just not a good idea. Uh -huh. I've been in shows that I've been there at six in the morning, hanging onto the tent to make sure it didn't come down. So. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> so how much does the tent cost? Uh, that tent? was the thing. Was like two hundred dollars. So and, the tent was only two hundred dollars yeah, for the whole yeah. tent. Yeah, yeah, and it came with size and everything. I got it at Sam's Club. You know, they, they, you know, they'll order it for you, and you go in and pick it up. It's, it was great. In fact, oh. I'm on my second tent in all those years. And so. do you, but do you need the panels? Do you need them? You, you need something to hang your work yeah, on. Yeah, because otherwise they're just, it's just. It's going to blow in the wind. Yeah. Uh, they have the mesh panels, which are much cheaper and easier to put up. Um, I would, I would suggest looking for used pro panels because there's people, you'll get it for half price or, okay. or even less. Uh, the first panels I had had cloth covers on them and they were homemade. And they had little ratchet things that held them together, and eventually I, I sold those for four hundred dollars. Uh, I didn't pay four hundred dollars for them. I sold them for four. So you made a profit on yeah, them. Yeah, I made a profit ah. on them. <laughs> and, and, and then I, I decided to go with the pro panels, and um, because of the vehicle that I use, I had to get the brake broke, broke down type. You know, so there's two pieces, because it's the only way to fit everything in a car. See, that's the other thing. You got to. Do you have a van? Oh. You know, how you, we used to drive, my wife and I used to drive two vehicles so I could get all my pictures in the back seat of one. And then we finally ended up with a, a Toyota Sienna and I took all the seats out and, and I used that. And now that and season's over. that's a minivan? Yeah, it's a minivan. Okay. So yeah. And now that season's over, I'm going to put the seats back in. So. <laughs> well, the guy who lived right across the, well, you probably know him, um, Tom Millsap? Yeah, Millsap, yeah. Yeah, he's a painter. Yeah. 
He's great. He, uh, he does the art show circuit. In fact, he will be going up north for the summer. Yep. That's what he does in the summers. Yep. And uh, he's got a minivan, and he's got like a wooden kind of frame in there yeah. where he's can like stack his the, pictures. They're like slats, yeah. I think, that he puts the pictures yeah. in. It's kind of yeah. cool. Yeah. But he puts a lot of pictures in that little minivan. <laughs> oh yeah, you know, you, and you, but you have to learn to pack because you only have so much room. Yeah. And I'd love to have a really big vehicle, but I don't have anywhere to park it. Well, you know, I yeah. rent rooms in my house out through Airbnb, and I I live right behind Oaks Farm, so I'm close to downtown. Yeah. So I get artists from the art shows, but. They'll say, oh, I have a van and trailer. I'm like, nope, you can't stay with me. I don't have anywhere for you to park that <laughs> thing, you know? Happen. That's right. That's right. That's so that's right. the benefit of having the yeah. minivan. If you can fit everything in there, yeah. you can. Yeah. Because they're limited on where they can stay because of that. They got a trailer and, a, you know, there's no way. I know. And, and that's people have to think about that. Uh, how am I going to get it there? How am I going to get set up? What am I going to do? Um, you know, I. I if, if people want to do it and they set up a show and they say, I'm going to do this, and they get the pieces that they need, they better darn well have put that, that tent up, put those walls up, had everything done, hung their work so they can see how to maneuver and put things around and taking pictures of it. Because when you get there, you're going to be going, oh my God, what am I doing? So you you know? could, if you don't remember how to set it up, yes, you're saying, oh yeah. Absolutely. And so you, Okay, where did we hang those? What did I do? How did I put that up, you know? Yeah, you have to, plus you have to do a trial run. We, you know, yeah. I was selected to be one of the artists for the Artist Studio Tour this year for mm -hmm. Artist Naples. So they said, well, we need some shady spot in the front for the people who are taking money or tickets. Anyway, I was like, there's no shade in the front of my house. So they'll all buy one of those $50 pop-up tents, right? Yeah, yeah. So I said, Heather, we got to set this up just to make sure we can set it up so we don't have to worry about it the day before. Yeah. It was so much harder to set up than we thought it was going to be. So we left it there for a week because we didn't want to tear it back down and set Absolutely. it back up. <laughs> Absolutely. Every person, even, uh, even the, ones that, the people that buy the dome tents, uh, I, I, I have stories from people. It, it took us a week to figure out how to take it out, put it up, take it down in a timely manner. Yeah, so never you know? wing that. If you don't have, if you haven't practiced at least twice, you're oh, not, you're going to be doomed gonna be at 530 in the morning in the dark. Yes. When you're trying to set that tent up, right? Yep. And then when you take down, you're tired and it's hot. And now, how did we do this? <laughs> you know? It's probably a good idea to take a video of yourself while you're doing it. You That's know what right. I mean? And do it in fast motion. <laughs> yeah, then you can remember. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, so yeah. all right, so we bought the tent, which was a couple hundred dollars because we bought it used. Right. We bought the panels for how much used? Four hundred probably. So I we're up say. to six hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What else do we need besides the pictures? Well, you're you're going to need your pictures too. You're going to need bins. Uh, there's the fold-out bins. You can find those. Everybody's got fold-out bins for sale. If okay. you if you go online, you're going to find go? them. Where like, uh, like, or yeah, well. Any place that, uh, 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 what's the one that uh, everybody, uh, not PayPal, not PayPal, uh, I can't think of the name, but, uh, um, and I'll think of it when this is over. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, any kind of, I, I look up art supplies, look up uh, photographic supplies, look, it, if you Google those things, you're going to, in, in this area, you're going to find groups or places where you can get that sort okay. of thing. Make phone calls. Talk to other artists. Where did you get this? How okay. did you do that? And, and you know, over time, it's, it's not something you could just do overnight. You have to think about it. You have to organize things. You can't just run out and say, I'm going to get this, this, and this, because you're going to be very disappointed. You're not going to get what you want. Anyway, so uh, right now I have the pro panel bins, and I love them because they're very professional looking. I can put all my stuff in the three bins. It sets in the center of the tent. I have room for people to go around and look at the walls. And by doing that, it makes it easier for people to see your work. And then you get to the walls, and you want something on the walls that will attract attention. So people come by, so your big stuff, the stuff that you're like, I may not sell this for a month or two months or even all season, but I want something that will that's eye candy. Okay, they okay. want to walk in. Oh my goodness, look at that picture. How did you do that? And Where that, do you put your most 
eye-catching picture. In the back wall. Back wall, because you yeah. want to draw them into yes. your booth. Yes, when they go by, I want them to turn around and go, whoa, and then they come in, and then they're kind of And then they'll hooked. see your other work once they're yeah, in. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Ah. So I put my metal prints on the back wall, because those are the most striking and the attract attention. So people come in and see those. And I have my canvases over here. Okay. Uh, for shows, I always frame my canvas because it's easier to take down and put up and cover. Uh, so it's, it's safer and you don't, you don't touch the canvas. So everything, even though it's coated, it keeps the canvas fresh. Okay. So, All right. That's good advice. Yeah. So then, um, and then I always keep extra pictures. So if something comes off the wall, I can put another one up. Because you sell right off the wall. Yeah, I do. Somebody I do. says, I want that big impact, high impact picture. You just say, here it, you go. It's gone. It's do gone. Do you ask them to come back at the end of the day, or you just give it to them? Uh, like sometimes I do. Uh, I had a show just a couple uh, m a month ago or so. And a guy came in, and he, he loved my, my beach trail picture. And it's a big picture. And he, he goes, I, I got to have this. was before we opened. And he walked back and forth. He came back. He says, I got to buy it right now. I, I can't. I can't leave it because I, you know, we're leaving town. I said, okay. I said, can you, can, uh, can, can we ship? He says, could you ship it? I said, yeah. Can I leave it up on the wall? He said, sure. So I worked it out with him. He paid before the show ever started. And I had it hanging there the whole show, so awesome. other people could see it. So you got to work with people, you know. Now, would you put a sold thing on it or no? Because no, you can sell I didn't. another one as right, a photographer. Exactly. You can make another print. Right. I, I, if I sell something on a Saturday. I can have a new one by the next Friday, and I can have it hanging in somebody's house. It usually takes less than a week. Yeah. Okay. So you know you have people that you deal with. You know I, I I use high tech imaging here in Naples because okay. it's just these guys are incredible and they'll get it done for you and they do everything and Tom Millsap uses it too. By the way, he uses high tech so a lot G -clay for G Clay stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they're very good, very quick. And, and they will ship what, what they sell. So if you had them do something, the shipping is almost nothing. So it's, you know, except for the cost of shipping, right. to pack it and everything. Awesome. And they guarantee it, so I like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, so I'm going back to cost. Mm -hmm. So we've, so far we've got, what, 200 for the tent, 400 for the panels. This fee f to get in is 100. Yes, yes. Is yes. our only other cost our pictures? Uh, well, yeah, you've got to replace everything that you sell. I know, but uh, let's just say just to get our foot in the door. So we're up to, okay. what, what are we up to, $700? Well, you're going to need bins of some oh, kind. Oh, the bins. How much yeah. do they cost? Uh, pro panel bin is, is going to be three or $400 a piece, so depending what on what you get. So let's say up to $700? Yeah. So yeah. let's say $1,000? Yeah. I'm up to $1,000? Yeah. To be quite honest with you, I think you could do the whole thing for two grand and have everything you need for a season. And that would be bins, that would be walls. If you, if you took your time and spent, you know, researched and bought things used, yeah, you could do that. Okay. But uh, it, it is expensive, and, and I knew that. And then you have yeah. to pay another two grand or so to buy the pictures. Right. You're going to hang up. Right. And you want to have, you want to have big is better. It is, yeah. How big? Uh, the biggest is that I can carry. So I have some things that are 50 inches by 40, 30 or 40 inches. Uh, most of it are uh, smaller than that. I have my, like my metal prints are 20 by 40. Okay. Because you could put them on the wall, they're easy to carry. People can buy them off the wall okay. and take them home. But then I have a sign. Everything you see here can be duplicated in a size that will fit your location. And I can pretty much guarantee it within a week. So that's where I get a lot of my sales. And, you know, it's just the way people are. Uh, they want something now, but they don't, your size is not the right size. Yeah. You're going to hear a lot of that. Well, a lot of people need to go home and measure their wall, too, don't they? Right, exactly. And that, that's the thing about, I used to try and do uh, framed pictures. Framed pictures are really great, except no one likes the frame you used. Yeah. And they won't buy the picture because it's got the bad frame. They never look at the picture itself. They look at the frame then. They don't look at the picture. So I sell mats. And I have mats, standard size mats that they can go down to Hobby Lobby, drop it into a picture frame, and put it up. Okay. So 8 by 10, 11 by 14, 16 by 20, and 18 by 24. That's what I have. And then I have some panoramas. And uh, those are panoramas. in the bin. Yes, they're in the bins, right. 
And on the but on the wall, what's the smallest size on the wall? Ah, uh, smallest size on the wall, a twenty by forty probably. Okay. Uh, you know. You want the, the big ones on yeah, the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And that, that way, people have they can see that you can do things in different sizes, and. I have verticals as well as horizontal pictures because Ooh. verticals have become very popular. You have an alcove. What are people going to do? Yeah. They want something for that alcove, you know. Good point. I had a couple that bought a neat picture, a, a shore picture in, uh, in an alcove, a vertical, and they had uh, like a tray that was underneath. So you had the alcove and then they put things like a, a pail. With, with sand in it oh my and, God, that's and a couple so of scoops Aww. you know things like that and so he says when I walk into the bedrooms at night my wife and I we look at that picture and say I've been there I know where that place is that's awesome you know so it's Aww. things like that so you've got to look at what how people do things and the longer you do it the better you get at it you know yeah and you can make corrections or change things for them and they they like it you know that's awesome yeah. all right so all right so so you qualified Mm -hmm. Oh wait, we never finished talking about how to qualify. What kind of pictures do you turn in to be juror? juror? I look for my the pictures <laughs> that word. that people are uh, enamored by. Okay. Like I have one called Little Old Men, and Little Old Men are these royal turns on the beach, and they look like ball guys at the beach with black socks. And people come into the tent for that. That's definitely in my collection of things that go to a show. Uh, like a, a Howard Allen or whatever, or you know, to Richard be, Solomon. You mean yeah. to be juried? Yeah, right. Juried in. Those, that's that's the, what I learned over time. High impact. High impact things, yeah. So things that, how do you determine what's a high impact picture? You're talking about, you uh, ask other people, it sounds like. Yeah, I do. Which, and I see, which of these 10 pictures do you like? Right. Or uh, after doing a, the local shows, I, I kind of know. I know people are like, I've got to have that picture. I love that picture. Well, now you have the experience, but I'm yeah. talking about new people. Yeah. They don't have the experience because I'll tell you what, yeah. I have a lot of, you know, I've got this Facebook group mm -hmm. and there are a lot of people who want to sell their art and they don't ask for advice because it's hard for me. I want to give them advice because I can tell you like that why they're not selling their art. Right. But they, they're not mm -hmm. asking me for advice, so I'm not going to give them advice unless they ask me. Mm -hmm. But part of it is you know it's not that their art is bad it's just it's not high impact no and no. it's not anything anyone would ever want to hang on their wall absolutely right a hundred percent right and that's where I think magazines come in and I since for years subscribed to uh, like uh, photographic magazines nature magazines and uh, magazines that had uh, uh, contests and because I wanted to see, and then I look, I, I didn't read the articles that much. I looked at the picture and I said, what is it about this picture that makes it really, really eye-catching? Yeah, okay. What is it? And I started looking at that. So instead of, when I take a picture now, I know kind of what I want, so I get the picture. But with the cameras and with the, uh, the, the, the equipment that we have today, if you're shooting in RAW, you can blow that picture up and you can use pieces of it. And so I started doing that. And it's, it's more in uh, placement, is how, what is it that attracts me to this picture? How can I get just that? How can I get rid of the fluff that I don't need? Ah. And that's how, I, that's how I got the pictures that I did. Okay. Or the day that I shot the little old men. I was out there for an hour and a half laying on a blanket as the birds went back and forth into the wind. And I took hundreds of pictures. And then I looked at the pictures. I called my wife in. And immediately, the little old men, she went, there, that's the one. I love that picture. And so she helped me with that one. But it's, it's, it's really taking a look and cropping the picture so that it has all the pieces that you want in a picture that draws your attention to what it is you want people to see. OK. That's the important thing. Is, and, and I looked at the pictures in the magazine, and that's what people do. They draw you to something within that picture. Okay. What is it that makes that picture so good? So well, I have some advice of my own for, for getting juried into shows. Because mm -hmm. if you're putting in three or four pictures, mm -hmm. one of the biggest things is consistency among your pictures. Mm. 
they don't have to be the same, but it has to look like it's coming from the same artist. Yeah, okay, yeah. Because remember I said that one guy, he was such, well, he's learned because he asked me, he knew I was a judge and he's like, why didn't I get in? I said, because his work is beautiful. Yeah. But yeah. he had this one bright, shiny, like a flamingo or a parrot or something on metal. Mm -hmm. And then he had this dark, gloomy dancer abstract p picture which was matted and framed in an ornate frame. I mean, it didn't even look like the same photographer. Yeah. And I forget what the other two were, but they, they just weren't, and, and everybody said that. Well, what the heck, what kind of photographer is he? Is he ballet photographer? Is he abstract? Is he burnt? You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. and he, all of them were good pictures, but he didn't get into the show because of that lack right. of consistency. The other thing we see a lot of are crappy frames. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That and that's why I don't like it. Yeah. like that, man. People yeah. will say, this person, doesn't matter if their pictures are good, shoddy work, boom, air out. Or if you take it to a company that does shoddy work. You know, constantly I'm getting in the mail, you know, oh, we'll do your canvases for 75% off. And mm. so one time I said, okay, you know, for $20, they were going to send me a 16 by 20 gallery wrap completely 20 Try bucks. it, yeah. I tried it and I sent something and I thought, well, my assistant at the time, she was a pretty woman, she had a picture with her and her son. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, I'll just give it to her, that'll be a gift to her, right? Oh my gosh, it, they had pink on and you know, red bleeds? Mm -hmm. Well, the red was bleeding all over the whole thing. It was just terrible quality. Mm -hmm. So as a judge, I see that where they go to a canvas gallery rep and the sides aren't wrapped very well mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. There's like spots on the canvases. Mm -hmm. That stuff really matters a lot when you're trying to get your ju juror. I can't right. say the word. <laughs> juror. Jury in. Jury in. <laughs> in. Right? Yeah. Well, and 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 you, you kind of learn by doing, but you're absolutely right. And uh, so when I but when I do those, I have usually because my two things are birds and landscapes. So I'll have two birds and two landscapes. And I try to find, like I said, find something that draws attention. So, you know, uh, a ruddish egret with, it, in the front of a group of, of uh, uh, flamingos or whatever, you know, something with red in it. You know, so you look for things like that. And the egret is the, the center of attention, but, and everything is a little off-center. So you've got this egret, and you've got the water where he pecked the water and, and didn't get a fish. But anyway, that's the kind of thing you use. Things that are, go wow, that is wow beautiful, yeah. right. You okay. know, because everybody can take a picture, you know, but not everybody can get the right background and, you know. All right, so you juried in, mm -hmm. you paid, you're probably up to what? Hmm. Four grand by the time you yeah. got your pictures printed. Mm -hmm. You have a way to bring them there. You have a vehicle to bring them there. Right, right. You have to be there at 5.30 in the morning usually? Especially a big show, yeah, well, or earlier than that sometimes, you know. Really? Hopefully, well, some shows they let you go in on a Friday and, and get set up and then you have Saturday and Sunday, you know, that that, those nice. are those are nice. But, but most at, of the time you have to get up really yeah, early. What yeah. if you're late? What happens? You're going to run like a crazy person and everybody's going to be coming in and wanting to look at pictures and you're still setting up. That's just so not a good thing. You don't want to be late. No, 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 no. You, you want to be early. You want to be set up by at least 15 minutes before the show opens? At least. In fact, we get there early enough, my wife and I, that we're set up an hour before the show. An hour. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we do shows on Marco Island at the Esplanade, and there you can't even get in till 8 o'clock. So you have to have everything on carts and ready to go. And, you, and it opens at what time? At 10. Wow. So <laughs> you know what you're going to do, and we have a, a, a method and a plan, and we just get everything done you wow. know <laughs> okay so you're in the show now yeah so how how do you know what to do now i mean do you like you know one of the questions heather wrote down in the in the list is how important is it to know your target audience and market mm -hmm. so well, now, do you just do local shows or do you travel i don't travel so you uh, do when local? I say local shows, I, I'll do, you know, up at Coconut Point, you know, if I'm going to do a two-day show. So I've done two-day shows in Marco. I've done two-day two shows in Naples. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, anymore... Uh, you're I, not going to travel, though. No, I don't. You, then you, then have you have to, meals. If you can't and, sleep in your own bed, you're not going. Yeah, it's not, not, well, not as much fun. 
right here yeah. in this area, I'm sure. We do. And, and our uh, season yeah. is pretty long. Like, if you live in Michigan, your season is three months, two and a half months. Yeah. Yeah. Our season is six months. Six months. Yeah, we start we start in October and go to April. So we've got a long season six, compared months, to the rest yeah. of the world. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but uh, so go ahead. Um, you were uh, okay, so your target audience. My is target what we're audience. Talking about. Uh, you know, I don't really look. Well, I shouldn't say that. I try to have things that work for different people. So you have a lot of tourists down here. Okay. So I'll have note cards for tourists. Okay? okay. Everybody likes something that they can take home or smaller pictures. How much do you charge for a note card? Uh, $15 for, for, for four 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 Are pictures. They, the separate, def, di, four different pictures? Yeah, and I have them on the back with my logo and, okay. uh, and my information. And $15 for four of them? Yep. How much do they cost you to get print? Uh, I do them myself, uh, uh, and I buy them a thousand at a time. So, so not much. yeah, not a very very small amount of money. It's more. It's a little labor intensive because you have to put each picture on and then put it in a pack and, and do all that. Uh, the, the money makers are are eight by tens because you can throw those in. You know, I buy the mats out of a place in California, and I'll buy a hundred at a time. Okay. Or you know, depending on it, you know, and then. Uh, so I can get those done, get them in a sleeve. You know, you have to have sleeves for them. You can't leave Where people. Where do you get all this stuff? I get it from the same place. Um, Ready Mat? That's the name of the company? Yes, Ready Mat. It's, it's, I think it's Northern California. Okay. And I've been dealing with them for years. And I've gotten to where, um, you know, I can call and they, they have all my information on the computer. They'll say, I want this, 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 and this, and then they send it out to me. Okay. It takes about two weeks to get it. In fact, I have to make an order. So you have to get a little organized. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's, we'll that's over shopping. time. I, you know, I went to some of these mat places on the Internet, and they were crummy. They just weren't. They weren't what I wanted. Yeah. And, and they were charging way too much. But these people do things in bulk. So you can buy 100 at a time, and then, or 500 at a time, or 1,000 at a time. So it, it's cost effective. And 8x10s okay. are very inexpensive to make. And I have a 24-inch printer that I do all my own printing, which I won in a contest, by the way. <laughs> you won the printer. In a I won the printer in a contest out a of California. Contest? Yeah, out of California. Wow. It was a. It was uh, at, um, what was the name of that company? It's still in business, and I still get stuff from them. It's a canvas company out there, and they had this big contest, you know. So, anyway, so I've had that printer, and I've put a couple of thousand dollars into it since I bought it years ago, and because it just needs repairs once right. in a while. Yeah. But it's cheaper to use and then I can do, I have templates and I can do all my note cards at once. I can do all, you know. Okay. So things to make it easier for you. But those are bread and butter. You know, $30 for an 8 by 10 So, uh, you know, I make some money on those. Okay. They can be put in a, it, the idea is they can be put in a suitcase. Right. And right. 11 by 14 is the same thing. And you're pushing 16 by 20 or 18 by 24, but I've had people from Europe that have figured out how to put them in a suitcase so they could take them home. <laughs> well, do you roll them ever? Uh, no, because I have them matted already. Oh, I but, see. But I have sold canvases to people in Europe. And what we do is put it in a tube, you know, get it all ready to go, put it in a tube, and either I can send it to them or they can take it on the plane. Okay. And I give them a tax statement so they're all set to go and off they go, you know. So we works. visited, um, you know, we do photo tours to Cuba, and we yeah. visit a yeah. photographer there, and he's, he's fairly famous in the United States, but he, he that's what he does. He rolls, rolls the pictures up. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're photographic prints, though. Yeah. But he uh, rolls them up, and he puts a little string around them, and that's how he sells them. And I, I was thinking that, oh, that's going to get bent up by the time you get yeah. home. But no, no, these are <laughs> that's nuts. I was just wondering. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and they've got their coatings and everything, and then I have... A bubble wrap that I can use for sending mats up to 11 by 14s and even bigger than that but uh, I can buy in bulk on those too so people in another place can order it and I can send it that way but I use Smugmug as my website mm -hmm. so they are all set up to sell things through Bay Photo in California so but you don't sell a lot of those some people will buy you know things that way but it's just my website basically is for for me to show off my work and, right. like and a talk to people. Yeah, That's exactly. What our websites kind of are, yeah, our yeah, brochures. Yeah. So. But I don't expect to make a lot of money on those. There's some, like, you know, you were talking to your, your group on, but uh, 
that, that you can actually set up to sell things, and, and they, they're pretty good, I guess, but I've never tried it. I just didn't. Um, what, about, what about how do you collect the money? I, uh, I would suggest that you have a card reader. Okay. Like a square? Yeah, I use square. And, and yeah, it's 2.75%. And now if somebody doesn't but, know about a square, how do they get a square? Uh, you can go to square.com. I think it's square.com. Or, I think so. Yeah. I don't if know. you look up square card, um, uh, credit, yeah, card credit card or reader. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. And they're, they're fairly inexpensive. I think, you know, they have the ones that are uh, Bluetooth, and, and I don't like that. I like having one that I can plug into my iPad and use because there's no Bluetooth connection, and I, and I, and I turn off anything that has to do with Wi-Fi and I just use my uh, Verizon account and that way I, I feel like I'm safer and now all the cards have chip readers yeah. so you can pop that in the people get and you can set it up so they get a receipt by email and uh, it's all or by phone or by text or whatever but and Square is free, right? It's free until you use it. Yes, it doesn't so cost they you anything. Cost, they, it's two point seven or whatever yeah. percent when you use it, but if right. there's no cost. There's right. a monthly cost. That's why I like it. Yeah, and then when you have a show, I have a cash box. You have to have a cash box. You know, you're going to have two hundred dollars in cash box with just different what do you denominations. Bring ones and fives mostly. Or? Ones, fives, tens, and twenties. Because it. if people are buying bigger items, you know, you got to make change. Pay cash? I have people <laughs> that have paid $1,500 in cash? in cash. Well, in two payments. So he dropped $800 on me and said, uh, when you're finished, I'll give you the rest. And he did, you know. Wow. Yeah. So that's kind of unusual, but yeah. I was going to say, yeah. I never have any cash, <laughs> like ever. Well, right, what about just, sales tax? How do you deal with sales tax? Sales tax. Uh, state of Florida, go to the Department of Revenue, uh -huh. the Florida Department of Revenue, and they will give you all the information you need. Um, they have an online setup so that uh, you, you get uh, everything can be done online through your account. And so at the end of each month, I go in and figure out what I made, how much, go in, fill out the form, and it's all done. You have a password and stuff, and it's all taken care of that way. Um, as far as the city of Naples. So when you ring up your square, if you sell something for $100, right. you add the 7% sales tax. It's, it's done on the square. So you just right. charge them $107. Yes. Okay. But now. And then you have to pay that $7 back to the, the government. Yes. But when you work with the Department of Revenue down in Florida, it's 6% for the state. And you have to figure out that 1% extra. It, you still pay them the same amount. Okay. But then you have, there's a little place in there that you have to go. Okay. So if you went to, let's say, up to uh, uh, Lee County, it's a half a percent there. So you had there's a there's a place in there where you could add how much you made that day, how much the half a percent was. You pay them the entire amount, but then they figure out how much they to give to the counties. That you know you have to just let it's it's. Well, it's the government has a, to make it complicated for us, right? <laughs> yeah, but you learn. Not only are they taxing us, but they're making it hard. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. What about business licenses? I get a uh, Florida or a uh, Naples business license, and uh, with that, uh, I just feel like since I have a business here and I do it out of my home, it was very easy. I went down, filled out some forms, and it's down off a of horseshoe by the airport there. Now that's a county. Yeah, business it's a, license. It, it's, do you need it, a city license if you're doing the art in the park and the things downtown in the city? I did get a city license because... So you have both a county and yeah, a city license? Yeah, because I wanted... Uh, well, I thought it was just a city license. Maybe it is a county license. I don't know. But anyway, I put when it up on my downtown, wall. When I downtown, I had two licenses. I had a county license and a city license. But yeah. now I don't live in the city anymore. I only have a county license. Yeah. Well, so that must be what I have. I, I You know, I but hang so it up on the do, wall. You probably do need both, though, yeah. if you're doing the... If you're selling anything within the city within limits. Within the city limits. I do have a city license. Yeah. Yes, I do. Mm. Yes, I do. See, this is good stuff to me, I think. Now, obviously, our audience is not just Naples, Florida. Right. But, you know, this is the, these are the things that they can look into in their own area. Right. If you're going to do shows in that area, you need to do that because uh, it's, it's just you don't want to be in, in a hassle with, with uh, the, authorities. With the government. 
you know. Yeah, fight authority, authority always wins. You yeah, know that song? They will, <laughs> they will win every, every time, every time. And then, they, and then you get a, a certificate, a tax certificate, which is nice. So if you do business with anybody in Florida, you give them their tax number. And, it's, and, and you could go to a store here in Naples, and if you're buying things for your business, and they have your tax number on, on, uh, on the, you don't pay any tax on it. Sales. You're right, you sales, sales tax. Anything that you sell, you know, that it doesn't work with resell. people out of so state. So they're mat, like if you bought your mats here in Florida. Right. You wouldn't have to pay sales tax because you're going to be charging sales tax on those Right, on mats. those items. So but like I use LexJet paper, and LexJet is, is a, a company that's based in Florida. So whenever I buy inks or whenever I buy paper or whenever I buy whatever I buy from them, a new printer, it's all tax free. So it's good to have that. And then they send you a little reminder at the beginning of January. Oh, by the way, we need that tax statement so that we can give you this for free. Uh -huh. You know, okay. so that's how it works. But that is really good to know. Yep, and it saves you some money, especially on big items. It's really a big deal. Taxes, taxes, taxes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, so you already, we already talked about different, we didn't really talk too much about um, the different finishes, but we did touch on it. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's important to, like you said, you have some metals, well, what you do is you put metal on the back wall and canvases on the sides. I right? even have some metal on the sides too. Okay, yeah. so you mix and match your finishes. Yeah. But I have my, my 20 by 40s on the back wall because they all match up. They're just different pictures, the same size, and I love panoramas. Panoramas, just, especially with metal, it just pops, especially if you use a, like a wide angle lens, like uh -huh. 14 or under. The pictures, if you have clouds in the pictures, everything is drawn to the center. It's just, it's incredible. You know? so, and then on the side walls, I have my canvas because people that walk in to see those then go, oh, you have that as well. Yes, I do by the way. <laughs> and so it gives them a chance. And then once they're in there, they're, most people will spend a lot of time just on the walls. The other thing that I just thought about is if you put pictures up on the walls, you have a way to tell people how much those pictures are and how big they are. Oh, good I advice. have a name of what, it, what I call it. Uh -huh. I have the size and I have the price. And that way, uh, in fact, you know what I did is I got the little note card sleeves and they're made out of plastic. They're clear. Uh -huh. And I put some Velcro stickers on the back because they'll stick on, 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 uh, on the, oh, on the on walls, the on the pan pro panels. Mm -hmm. So then I can print them out on a printer and I have them all printed the same size. So if I, ch if I change pictures, all I do is go through my pictures and put the new one in there and slap it back up on the wall. So you put the name of the picture. Name of the picture. The size of the picture. Size of the picture. The cost of the, cost. the picture. Mm -hmm. And that's it? Yep. And then it's up on the wall next to the picture. So people, they don't have to ask me. Yeah, people it, hate to ask. They hate to ask and, and my wife says, don't hover. That's what I used to do. I used to hover. Can I help you? And people were like, nope. No, <laughs> uh, we're leaving, <laughs> you know, and so you got to give them a chance. And uh, so now it gives me a chance to talk to people when they a ask a question, but at least they know what, what things are and how much they are. And if I see people that are interested, and you know, they start talking amongst themselves and they're pointing at things, and then, then I'll go and talk to them. Now, but one of the things we teach mm -hmm. is that you should have a story about every single picture. Absolutely, 100%. And that's how you approach people. Mm -hmm. You never say, can I help you? You mm -hmm. say, you see them looking at a picture, and you just go right into the story about that picture. Absolutely, 100%. Oh, my God, you should have seen when I tried to take that picture. It was, you know, 4 o'clock in the morning. I got a flat tire on the way there. Yep. You know, you just go right into the story, and then that kind of draws them in to having a conversation with you, and it gets them emotionally involved in your art. Yeah. But you're not ever saying, may I help you? Because yeah. that's, no one likes that. I, I, I worse, guess I don't though, use that. I use, do you have any questions? Worse yeah, is sometimes. ignoring people completely. Mm -hmm. If you see somebody sitting in the back of their mm -hmm. booth reading a book, yeah. or on their cell phone texting or something, that to me is like that just says this oh I don't want to be here 
It yeah. doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't show any professionalism at all. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I would rather have somebody like, "Can I help you? Can I help you?" than <laughs> sitting there like ignoring you. <laughs> so. My wife. My wife sits out out here, and she kind of helps with the with the sales. So I can be over here, and she's over here, and so we're kind of working together. But every time I go into a story, she rolls her eyes because she's heard all the stories. All those stories so many times, <laughs> I know. She could go in there and do the same thing I'm doing because she's heard them all. Like these two guys yeah. sitting here watching us at this show, do yeah. they have to hear the story that I'm going to tell again? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. That's what it's like. But it's so much fun. See, that's the thing. To me, it's fun selling. It's fun being with people. And it's fun telling the stories, you know? I think it's, I, I think it. that the other thing about the stories is you're a very people-oriented person, so am I. It's easy for me to talk to people. It's probably easy for mm -hmm. you to talk to people, mm -hmm. but not all artists are like that. No. Most are very shy. Landscape and bird photographers are loners generally. They don't really even like to talk to people. They're afraid of people. They don't want to sell. Where are my birds? Yeah. So yeah. they to 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 teach them just tell the story of your work. Mm -hmm. It's just easier for them to connect with the people, and that's what the people want. They want to connect with the artist. Yeah, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So um, I got one last question about. The booth itself. Mm -hmm. Do you or how do you collect information on the on the possible customer? Because not everybody's going to buy right then and there. Do you have a way to get their information? I'm probably not the best person to ask that. What I do is, if someone comes in and they're interested, I'll say, "Would you like a card? I am in Naples. This is my phone number. This is my email." This is my website. Feel free to call me. Feel free to send me a text. Mm -hmm. see, send me an email, and I'll get back to you right away. But you don't follow up with them. Uh, no. And and uh, generally, though, because I'm here so so often, I have people coming back and say, "I saw you last year, and now I want to buy this picture." Uh, okay. They know you. They remember you. Uh -huh. You know, hi. You know, uh, you know. Oh, and and it's that kind of thing that it makes me happy. Or I had. I always uh, donate to different groups, you know, so I'll get, donate pictures. And I, uh, every year I donate to the Empty Bowls. And so I had like, I don't know, five, four pictures or something like that this, this last year and then this year. And, you know, they do the blind auction and so on. And then I had two ladies last year that came back and they had, they, they, they said, we came back to see you. We want a picture with you. So here we are Aww. with our arms around these ladies, you know, they got, we got a picture for them. We Aww. bought your pictures. We loved them, you know. People want to connect with the artists. That's really important they really do. Part yeah. Of, of yeah. Buying, you know, art. So. Yeah. Um, crap! I just had a good question. It flitted in and out of my mind. Dog, God, yeah. I hate when I that didn't happens. No, just do that to people. <laughs> oh, how many? I, I remember what it was. How many shows do you do in a, a? You do only six months of shows. Six months of shows. How many shows? Uh, all together, uh, somewhere between eighteen and twenty-one shows. Okay, so 18 and 20, let's say 20 shows. Mm -hmm. Wait, what's divided by 6? 18. Let's mm -hmm. say 18 shows. Mm -hmm. So that's how many shows a month? Boy, am I good at math. It's, it's ah! Three usually shows a month. Three shows a month, yeah. Okay, so that's a lot. That's, you only get one weekend off, basically. Yeah, and uh, one thing my wife hates more than anything is we have back-to-back -back shows generally at least once a month uh, at, uh, at Camier Park and then one in, in uh, uh, Marco. And so then you run into set up, take down, set up, take down. It's not like a two-day show where you set up and then you go home and sleep and take a shower and go to in the morning. It's you've got to take everything down, put everything back in the car, take it down to Naples, or take it down to Marco, take it all out again, set it up again. At the end of the day, take it down again and go home. So Sunday night is like, oh my God, we so need to sleep. To, well, <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I'm not going to ask you how much money you make, even though I'm really curious, but <laughs> are you, can you make a living in six months of 18, a year round, because you have a retirement mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have that retirement money, could you make a living just doing local shows? No. 
No. Mm -mm. Okay, that's good to know. I have, a, <laughs> I have a higher expectations for, for uh, spending money than I do making money. Uh, so, no. But you make we, enough money, oh, obviously, yeah. or you wouldn't keep doing all this hard no, work. No, every year I increase my, my, okay. my kitty. And, and someday I, I may have a lake cottage. But <laughs> right now, I just, I, well, once I set that up, I just let the, that's my money. That's what I work with. And so every year it increases by three or $4,000. So every okay. year I have more than I had before. And is it a lot of, no, but it's fun. And I like doing it and I like, it pays for everything I do. And uh, you know. So you're like living expenses. Yeah, it pays for all of that. Okay. So I, I kind of feel like, you know, I don't have any expenses beyond that, and uh, it's just fun. And like I said, you know. What about now? For me, when I was doing art shows, the thing I hated was setting up and tearing down. I hate it. Mm -hmm. You hate it too. I hate tearing down more than setting up, because tearing down, you're already tired, yeah. exhausted. It's hot, and by the time we get out of there, uh, you, you, you know, I take extra clothes to wear in the morning and extra clothes to wear in the afternoon because you are going, it's, it's just going to be it's awful. Hot. Yeah, we and especially Florida. taking down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if it's raining, it's just that much worse. Oh, You're like a drowned yeah. cat, you know? Yeah. So you got to get everything out of there. But just the fun of being with the people and sharing what you have and sharing what you know, it, it's the teacher in me. And I've always been that way. And it, to me, it makes me happy. And I like discussing with people and talking to them. and. I got people that want to put their big canvas with their iPhone, and we got to talk about that. And you know, and I, would, I, I can't make that up for you because I, I don't have time. You know, mm -hmm. I don't have time to do it. But it's every time I see a picture out of an iPhone, they're really great pictures. But when you start blowing them up, they're not going to be as pretty yeah. as they were, and you're yeah. going to see a lot of blur. And people don't. Oh, it looks great. You know. Yeah, I know. So, but anyway, I love talking to people. I'm going down that rabbit trail. I do that. I'm just down that hole. I'm looking for that <laughs> rabbit. Uh, but no, it, it's it's fun. It's fun. Enjoy. Any doing. last tips about uh, just about specifically art fairs? I think we covered a lot. <laughs> yeah, we did. Just remember when you're first setting up, do it many times before you get to the show that and know right where advice. things are. You know, if you don't, you're going to be miserable. Yeah, because I mean, just that little pop-up tent that Heather and I put up. Mm -hmm. It was a lot harder to do, and that's easier to do than a normal tent. Yeah. This is just a yeah. fifty-dollar little tent, just yeah. the you know, just the canopy. It wasn't a full tent. Yeah, and it was not as easy as we thought it should be. Too many of those joints that look like and scissors. You two people, <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. So, yeah. all right, all right. So, what projects are coming up for you? What's next? Are the season uh, over, or is there anything left? I'm I'm done for the season. Uh, we're going to put everything in the uh, in the in the storage area. Uh, like I said, we clean everything up, and uh, my wife is just as happy as she can be because we actually get to sleep in on a Saturday morning or a Sunday morning. So and then just, you take the next six months to take the pictures. Uh, yep, so. we will be out, and uh, I have some ideas. Uh, the super moons have been great; I've been enjoying those. And and uh, w when the weather is providing uh, no clouds or very few clouds, yeah. you, you don't want no clouds, but you want you know don't want it all cloudy. And uh, you know. We're going to go up north, and, and I've got some, actually, we're looking at uh, going up to North Carolina and, and uh, spending a couple of weeks up there by the mountains there. I'm going to go up and take some trail walks and stuff. So nice. we'll see how that goes. I thought, I, that sounds like a nice life, though, to work, you know, do the, take the pictures for six months, sell them for six months. Mm -hmm. Sounds nice. It's I fun. I like that. It's fun. What's your website? www.timothybathphotography.com uh, Timothybathphotography.com Right. If you just put Timothy Bath, you'll Come find on. me. <laughs> you'll find me. Timothybathphotography.com <laughs> Yes, yes. All right. Well, thank you for being on the show. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> and to the audience, I'm hoping you'll do us a big favor and leave us a review on iTunes. iTunes reviews help us more than anything. Helps us come up in the search engines. Uh, the more attention that you get, the more they show your podcast to people. So iTunes is the right place to leave us a review if you're enjoying the podcast. Um, I'm Peggy Farron. Please join us next week for the Understand Photography 
show. We broadcast a new episode every Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time on both our Facebook page, YouTube, and as a podcast. Thanks for watching. Get up.